Thank you very much and welcome. So it's really great to see that there's such high interest in the topic of sustainability. And uh, thank you for every, uh, very much everybody who's here today, but thank you also to the about 200 people uh, who signed in for our live stream. So welcome as well. Sustainability is a topic you've mentioned, I mean, not so easy. And if we think about our industry, the aviation industry, we're considered to be one of the hard to abate industries. So one of those industries where it's really difficult to take the CO2 out. And we, we don't want to take that as an excuse. We want to make sure that we still do every little action we can, go every step towards, um, in the end, CO2 neutrality. And um, showing you that we really mean it is why we've also brought our targets with us. And that's not only targets of Lufthansa Cargo, that's also the much bigger target of Lufthansa Group, and we are, of course, part of that one. So if you look at it, in 2050, we want to be CO2 neutral, so net zero, uh, and in 2030, we want to re have reduced our carbon footprint by 50%. So that's huge steps. That is nothing that just happens in the aviation industry. It's something we really need to work on and really make a big effort to get there. And um, I guess you've heard of many companies setting this zero target at 2050, which is also far out, uh, where you feel like, is it real? Does it mean something? And uh, to show that it really means something to us is one of the reasons why we've also partnered up with SPTI, the Science-Based Targets Initiative. So that's a very renowned organization uh, that tries to break down the Paris Climate uh, Protocol goals to the different sectors and to make sure that each industry participates in, in, in such a way that in the end we reach uh, this climate path and uh, Lufthansa Group is setting those targets for the Lufthansa Group scale, and then it's, of course, also breaking down to us. And this target is a really even harder to achieve one, because it means, as each sector is taking out the CO2 of its sector, that you have to reduce CO2 in your sector. And uh, we'll get to that later, but there, of course, means to reduce CO2 out of sector, which is sometimes a lot cheaper than doing it in your sector, uh, and we have both targets, the overall targets, but also the targets within our sector. To show you what we've already achieved, um, in the last 25 years, we've more than halved our CO2 footprint per ton kilometer transported, and that has mainly come from new generations of aircraft, uh, because the, in the end, the engine manufacturers are still doing a fantastic job every generation is still reducing CO2 and kerosene by something more than 10%, 12, 13, 15% depends on which aircraft you exchange with which. But that's not the only lever we have. So we are also working on things to reduce weight, which then reduces kerosene, to reduce drag, and to do operational things that really help us reduce CO2. And sustainability for us doesn't only mean to talk about CO2. I mean, that's very prominent in our minds, and I think it's also hugely important. But we also want to make our contribution to society. And uh, for us at Lufthansa Cargo, that is Cargo Human Care. It's an initiative where we reach out to one of our big freighter markets, former freighter markets, uh, Kenya. And we've had uh, initiatives by our employees uh, to help um, with an orphanage, with medical aid, with education. Uh, so I think it's fantastic projects and we're really proud and we're in there for a long time. So it's not just helping in for a year, but it's really something that for years we have uh, been supporting and will be supporting. And I know the audience here is quite mixed. So some are super expert uh, in the topic. Some others are more kind of interested in what is it all about. So this one is nothing for the super experts. You know it all. So it's this question of the different scopes of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So in the middle, scope one, in our case, Lufthansa Cargo Airline is flying. So the vast majority uh, of our CO2 footprint comes from flying. And then here in scope two, we've got some, especially on the uh, upstream activities, we've got, um, for example, electricity or heating for our ground infrastructure for Lufthansa Cargo, that's really small. So 
comparatively, that's not a very big lever. And then if you go to uh, scope three, so um, really where we get services, there again we are big, think of our bellies, so we uh, do sell the freight on the uh, Lufthansa Passage bellies, on Brussels Airlines, Austrian bellies, rear wings, Discover and so on. So we don't produce uh, that CO2 ourselves, but we uh, get the freight capacity and that's why there again our CO2 footprint is very big. And showing you what we are planning for, then it's really, we came from more than 2 million tons of CO2 per year. We're aiming at zero in 2050. Right now we're at this 1.4 million tons per year. That was after we phased out the MD-11 and are now flying with the pure 777 fleet. So you see, that definitely brings an impact. But now there is no new generation of aircraft around. So around here, 27, 28, we're getting uh, into the 777 eight freighters and that will again help, but this path until then will have to come from other measures uh, because the newest aircraft for now we already have. So looking into what are all the options that we have. To this one I've already talked, fleet modernization. Fuel efficiency and sustainable aviation fuels. Those are the ones that are acknowledged by the science-based targets initiatives as reducing CO2 in your own sector. And then, as a bridge technology and as getting started, of course, it's also great uh, to do compensation in other areas. Um, and of course, we also offer that to our customers. So it's not constrained to this. We also offer that, but we have very ambitious targets within the aviation sector to reduce uh, the CO2 footprint. And I'll go into each of the four, so fleet modernization, fuel efficiency, sustainability, uh, sustainable aviation fuels, and compensations. I've talked to that already. So we have more than halved our CO2 footprint in the last 25 years. I think that's very remarkable. It shows that investment in new aircraft is actually a very good means to help the environment. Sometimes it's kind of everything in the aviation industry is bad. Uh, I think that's really not a good approach because if old aircraft keep flying, uh, it of course has a very different impact than if you've got the newest technology that just takes a lot less fuel. And then here, going to the 777 8, will reduce our CO2 footprint by another 13% again. In the big scheme, it's six percentage points uh, compared to uh, uh, 25 years back, but again, that will be a big step. But it will not help us to ever get to zero, so we need other means to get to zero. These are the topics uh, that you can do uh, once you've got the newest and best technology there. Reducing frictional resistance, that's one of the innovations that our colleagues of Lufthansa Technik have developed together with BASF. Uh, and we've got our colleague, Mr. Müller, from Lufthansa Technik here, and he can show you the whole thing and also explain it way better than I can. But the idea is to reduce the frictional resistance at the hull of the aircraft, so the, in German, mini Verwirbelungen, yeah? So uh, it really helps to have the aircraft fly more smoothly and as a kid uh, recently explained to me, also faster uh, because there is less drag. Then the whole topic of reducing weight is very important. So late, lightweight containers we have already in the entire fleet. We're now also thinking about lightweight nets, so the nets that uh, secure the air freight. Um, it's also a question of the wooden planks. So when you build pallets, you've got those wooden planks below. And um, we found a means, and it's called square timber, uh, to have a paper version in the end, so it's cardboard uh, rather than wood, and again, that takes out weight. So any of these weight reduction schemes, of course, help. And then it's the optimization of operations. So can we fly more direct? Can we forecast better how much fuel we really need under certain weather conditions? Um, can we, in taxiing, only use uh, one engine rather than two? So there's a lot of means there, and our flight, flight operations has a very long track record in looking into these things. Uh, and there's also my colleague, uh, Captain Jonas Merkler, here today, who can tell all about it, and he'll also be down there if you're interested. So I think it's a lot of small measures that all help reduce an extra little bit, uh, and I think it's a lot of work, and I think it's worthwhile. So, and then uh, the question of uh, why do we call it fry to fly? So, uh, if you think about um, sustainable aviation fuels, 
most of them today are coming from biogene ingredients. And one of those ingredients is cooked oils that have been used for cooking somewhere, and in their second life, they can become kerosene. So eat more French fries, and you can help the aviation industry become greener. Very important, and please uh, take your fries today all there. Um, as you can think, if it's about biogene feedstock, at some point it's limited. Yeah? A lot of people tell us that there's a lot more feedstock available and it can, has still huge growth potentials, and I guess that's right. But in the end, if it's not only the aviation industry, but also other industries that want to have this uh, sustainable aviation fuel, then this other technology, power to liquid, will become very important. So the question is, have you, can you have current power, that is um, solar power or wind power, put CO2 together with it and water and then create kerosene. And we're among the very first ones uh, to go into that uh, development and there's the very first uh, um, factory, it's uh, calling it a refinery, uh, well it's quite small for a refinery but really big compared to the laboratory approaches that were there before. And uh, it's the first not only German, but worldwide um, plant where this power to liquid uh, fuel is developed. And I think what is so important about it, it takes out CO2 before the flight and it takes it out of the aviation sector. So it's for the SPTI targets really important, but it's expensive. And since it's expensive, I think that's quite a bit of the discussion we have. Um, who is willing to pay for it, to what extent? Um, is the industry scaling fast enough to bring prices down also? So I think that's a big discussion here. And it's not the only option. So the other option is, of course, to go for compensation. And there's all a number of ways to reduce uh, CO2 in other industries. And as I said, for now, I think it's perfect because any CO2 taken out of the air helps. Over time, as all sectors get better, of course, it becomes more important to do it within your own sector. This today is the cheaper alternative, and cheaper not in terms of that it's not reducing CO2, but cheaper in terms of euros that it costs. Although, of course, we only um, work with gold standard projects, so to make sure that they're really proven to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. It's after the flight, so the timing of the impact is different, uh, but it's, of course, helping the environment in terms of molecules in the air in the very same way. Well, that's... My little view on this, I think every action counts. I think we need to start now, and it's not okay to say there will be a new technology someday, and then maybe in 2040 with a hydrogen aircraft we can start or so. No, we can start now. I think we've also got an obligation to do it. I think we want to hand over this world to our children in a good shape, and we need to take the steps now. And we want to be part of that, and we invite you to be part of that discussion, to find ways to do it together, and to, in the end, get this aviation sector every day a little bit cleaner, every day a little bit less uh, CO2 intense. Thank you very much for your attention.